Hello, in this video, we are going to talk about essay and report writing. Well, writing reports and assignments can be a daunting prospect. So, this unit is designed to help you develop the skills you need to write effectively for academic purposes. You will also learn how to interpret questions and how to plan, structure, and write your assignment or report. After studying this unit, you should be able to understand what writing an assignment involves. Identify their strengths and weaknesses. Consider the functions of essays and reports. Develop writing skills whatever the stage they have reached. Good practice in writing. Well, this unit is a general guide and will introduce you to the principles of good practice that can be applied to all writing. If you work on developing these, you will have strong basic or core skills to apply in any writing situation. For assistance with specific aspects of any course you are to study, always refer to any guidance, notes or handbooks that have been provided. Moreover, this unit won't solve all your difficulties immediately. Developing your writing skills is an ongoing process and one that involves frequent reflection on the way you tackle assignments. How to use this unit? Well, there are two options. Either you can dip into it choosing the sections that you feel are most relevant to your needs or you can work through it from start to finish. Moreover, we suggest that you don't use it in isolation but in conjunction with your current study, ideally while you are working on an assignment or report. Think for a moment about your reasons for studying this unit. Well firstly, is it perhaps because you don't understand what is expected of you in your assignments or that you are not clear about how to improve? Another reason, what are your feelings about your writing skills? Lastly, what previous experience have you had of essay or report writing? Writing skills can be learned. We want to emphasize straight away that this is a process that can be continually developed. There is no single correct way of writing. Different academic disciplines demand different styles. This can be confusing if you feel that you've mastered what is required for one course only to find that something different is expected on another. You might feel more comfortable with one particular style of writing or presentation rather than another. You will also have your own individual way of writing which reflects your personality or your culture. Think of this as a strength that can be built on. Let's take a step back and think about why you are writing assignments. As with most tasks, if you have an understanding of why you are doing something and how it fits into the bigger picture, it is easier to define what is required of you and therefore to do a good job. So what do you see as the reasons for writing assignments? Well, firstly, to meet the assessment requirements of my course. Secondly, to demonstrate my understanding of particular topics to my tutor. Lastly, to check that my writing is at the right level for my course.
Most students tend to view the writing process in these terms that it provides evidence of their understanding and skills to whoever is marking their work. It is possible to engage with the course materials for a while without knowing whether or not you have really understood what the writer is conveying. If you have the opportunity to attend tutorials, you may be able to listen to what is going on without feeling you have to say very much. Then comes the crunch. An assignment is due and you are forced to expose your thinking and understanding to someone else and be awarded marks for it. For many students anxiety about assessment can overshadow the enjoyment and personal growth that the writing process can offer. Now we are going to look at understanding the task. Well, being a successful writer in one area doesn't always make it easy to know what is required in another. So here are some general questions that you can ask to help define the requirements for particular pieces of writing. What will my tutor be expecting? What is the most appropriate format? Report or essay? What is the question asking? Is the aim to inform, to analyze or to recommend? Or perhaps something else? Is there a recommended length? Is there advice about how to distribute the word allocation between sections? Is a formal style required or a more personal tone? Your answers to these questions will depend on the type of assignment you are being asked to write and the advice or guidance given for that assignment or for the course more generally. Your tutor will be able to help if you are unsure. Well, moreover, your answer may depend on the subject you are studying and, again, we would recommend that you refer to any guidance notes that you may have been given. Essentially, a report can be simplified into three general principles. How was it done? Why was it done? What does it mean? Once you are clear in your mind about these questions in relation to a particular assignment, you will be in a position to think how best to proceed in answering them. In general, a good report is one that you don't need to reread. It is clear and the information that it contains is easy to find. The structure is fairly rigid, usually divided into sections, probably with subheadings each performing a very specific task. Now, let's look for an example. Well, a scientific report will be a structured account of an investigation or experiment that you have carried out, whereas a business report may require you to imagine that you are making recommendations to your boss or colleagues for a particular course of action. You need to strive for relevance and conciseness and your report should proceed in a logical and ordered way. Now, I will talk about essays. The essay should guide the reader from the issue raised in the title to a conclusion by developing a clear and logical line of thought so that the reader is not sidetracked by points that are not directly relevant. It is normally in the form of continuous prose using paragraphs, but probably not using headings or numbers. This means that while the essay may be broken up into paragraphs, generally the writing flows along without interruption. An essay should contain an introduction 
telling the reader what the essay is about. A main body containing the meat of the essay where you outline your particular point of view while demonstrating awareness of other perspectives or interpretation. A conclusion summarizing the content of the essay clearly and concisely. You may well have thought of some, if not all, of the following stages, preparation, planning, drafting, polishing, letting go, reflecting on the feedback. If we present the list in a different way, figure 1, you can also see that this process is not linear. It is not simply a case of beginning with an analysis of the assignment and ending with a consideration of your tutor's comments. It involves frequent revisiting of earlier stages, checking and reflecting. Two steps forward, one step back. You may notice how much depends on a constant referring back to the question. Now, we will look at estimating the time for the task. First, you need to know how much time you have available for your assignment. The pacing of your studies comes outside the scope of this unit, but it can be very demotivating when you no longer feel in control of your studies because, for whatever reason, you have fallen behind. So, it is extremely important to meet the deadlines set by the COS team in your COS calendar whenever possible. Additionally, you need to be both realistic and flexible. Almost certainly you won't have the amount of time you would ideally like, and it's also possible that something will happen at work or home which will affect your time table. However, having blocked out the time in your study calendar or diary, see how far you can stick to it. If you find that you need more time for certain stages, then have another go for the next assignment, allowing the extra time in order to make it more workable. Do you dread deadlines? Of course, there are lots of different patterns of working. Some students can only work to deadlines at the very last minute, while others prefer to work in shorter snatches over longer periods. The main problem with the former is that you may have to slip over some of the points we are now discussing, which could be counterproductive. Waiting until the last minute may be because you are afraid to begin. So, if this applies to you as it will to many others, you might find it helpful to pause here and consider why you feel this way. Is it because you are frightened by the prospect of starting? Perhaps you have looked at the title and felt that you just don't understand what is wanted. You have some ideas but don't know how to put them together. Maybe you just don't want to do it. It seems a daunting task. Or is it because you need to develop your reading or note-taking skills? Try reflecting on your own experience. Then, you will be in a better position to help yourself if procrastination is a problem. You can ask yourself, what am I going to do about this? What help do I need? We hope this unit will provide some of that help. Good enough is okay. We can almost hear you saying that you never have enough time for your assignments, 
whatever your approach, and, we empathize with this view. This may be, even more, of a problem, if English is not your first language. It is well known that, time constraints are a barrier in distance learning, and, you may well, have to be satisfied, with doing, what is good enough, whatever your circumstances. Your aim, should not be, to submit, the, perfect, assignment. Research involves finding out more about the topic in hand. Let's use a dictionary as an example. In looking up a word, you are effectively researching it. We tried looking up the word research in a couple of standard dictionaries, not so much to find out what the word means, but to see if a definition might provide a useful slant for this section of the unit. Indeed it did, for three phrases, not only confirmed our understanding of the word, but also gave us a way forward that might be helpful to you. These three phrases tell us that research is a systematic investigation. That is, it suggests a thoroughgoing search of the material available to you making sure that you don't leave anything important out. A critical investigation is one which goes on deciding what is relevant to the subject, whether something you have found out should be included or not. A careful search, that is, it is very unlikely that the question is going to be answered just by looking at a single section of your course. In short, researching something can clarify or explain, but also may spark off further thoughts which can lead you deeper into your topic. Now, we move on identifying sources. So, what material L do you have available to you? Your materials are likely to be your first sources of information. Any Guidance notes you may have been given will sometimes tell you exactly which sections you need to look at. But don't forget that your course materials encompass more than just these texts. Make use of any handouts you've been given. Your own notes of what you have been reading or watching from tutorials or from observations or experiments you have been carrying out. Newspaper articles or reviews chosen carefully can be a useful extra up-to-date source for some courses. In addition, of course, there are many more sources available to you through libraries or the internet. Your course materials may also provide reading lists. If you have time to undertake further research, that's fine and is good academic practice. Certainly, you will not lose marks if you restrict yourself to the course materials. It is how you answer the question that gives the grade, not how much you know. You can always follow up some of the suggested extra reading once the course has finished. At this point, you are likely to have a great deal of material and many ideas to hand, most probably in note form. Now is the time to start refining and focusing. You may have been doing this already as you have carried out your research and thought over your findings. Why plan a piece of writing? Planning is about creating a framework that will help you to make choices about what needs to be included in your assignment and what doesn't. Some people feel they don't need to plan. Starting to write helps them know what it is they are going to say. If you recognize yourself here, we suggest you consider the points we raise in this section. 
Your list probably includes at least some of the following. Helps me to separate what's essential from what's less. Enables me to express my ideas more effectively. Ensures that what I want to say doesn't get lost. Assists in building an argument. Makes sure that I don't exceed the word limit. Gets the sequence of ideas right. Even short pieces require planning so that you are concise and to the point. As the required length and level of complexity of a piece of writing increase, so does the need to organize your ideas. The table highlights the elements of a science or technology report, though the same general principles apply in other disciplines too. You need to assemble and order your material, perhaps under a set of headings which can be added to or subdivided. Your plan will help you to include material that is relevant and to the point. The table highlights the elements of a science or technology report, though the same general principles apply in other disciplines too. You need to assemble and order your material, perhaps under a set of headings which can be added to or subdivided. Your plan will help you to include material that is relevant and to the point. Essay contains some interesting and important points. Is there an introduction and a conclusion which help to guide the reader? Are important concepts or ideas communicated? Does the writing build and have a sense of direction? Can you discern an overall plan? Can you discern an overall plan? Well, what do you think? Is the presentation of evidence or supporting material effective? Which points are prioritized or do they all have equal billing? Are links made between different points? Does the essay flow? Has the writer made the ideas his her own? Are chains of logic created? The more time we spent thinking about this, reflecting on it, the more it seemed to us that the key is direction. If you can give your writing direction, then the rest will follow. In other words, if you have a case to put an argument to make this provides the essay's direction, the elements listed above will then slip into place much more easily. Well, on a superficial level, even the appearance of work can be a giveaway and betray a lack of planning. Solid blocks of text can look overwhelming. So you should normally aim for an average of three or four paragraphs per side of word process to four paper. Solid blocks of text imply that the writer hasn't taken the time or is unable to organize the material. At the other extreme, written work with the appearance of being very broken up, lots of separate sentences, each treated as a paragraph, conveys the same impression that the writer doesn't have a plan or hasn't developed his or her ideas in sufficient detail. No paragraphs. Go back and look at your plan. Too much in brackets. Something is in the wrong place or is not strictly relevant. Go back to planning. As I mentioned earlier, as I said before, if you need to say this often, you are going round in circles. You need a better plan. Can you 
think of some other warning signs, things that you write when you have lost your way in an assignment. Try to dig a little further and apply the questions. Is there an introduction and a conclusion which help to guide the reader? Are important concepts or ideas communicated? Does the writing build and have a sense of direction? Can you discern an overall plan? Now, to begin your planning, you need to generate ideas or brainstorm. At this stage, you are including everything that you'll think may be relevant. Nothing should be dismissed yet. This part is about gathering your resources and your thoughts. For instance, using the essay title. There are advantages to studying as a mature student. Do you agree? We tried to brainstorm for ideas and produced this list, but, of course, it wasn't this tidy. Gregory quote, Steelworkers Life Experience Degree Certificate What does it say about you? Home Commitments and Comparison with Younger Students Government Policy Numbers Studying Changes in the Workplace Need to Retrain Need for Family Support Self-Discipline and Motivation Agree or Disagree with Statement Define mature? No, too obvious. This isn't everything, but it is a start and is helpful in understanding what the question requires. Now, you need to think about grouping the ideas, creating a flow for your assignment. We started by grouping together our ideas and material for the essay on the possible advantages of being a mature student. This helped us to create a mind map by seeing where links could be made and so made it much easier to decide where the weight of evidence was taking our argument. Figure 2. Can you see the advantages of using this type of approach? To planning, grouping the parts of your assignment together and making links helps to ensure that you avoid a disjointed response to the question. It can also show how balanced your answer is going to be. Are there too many points on one side or does it appear to be balanced? You have now reached the stage when it is time to translate your plan, whatever its form, into the assignment itself. It is likely that this will be a first attempt at the exercise of first draft. You may be one of the lucky few who only needs to write one draft. Or, if you have taken some time over your planning, one draft before the final version may be enough. But, if you are finding it difficult to reconcile opposing points of view or to fit in a great deal of information, you may need two or three drafts. If this is the case, take a step back and check that you are sticking to your plan and are not trying to include too much, just in case. Finally, if you feel you need to write lots of drafts before you are satisfied with the final product, ask yourself why it is necessary. What might you do to reduce the number of drafts and thus save time? Your plan only needs to make sense to you. It may be diagrammatic in form, using circles and arrows and abbreviations. It is the bare bones of your assignment. It is also disposable and changeable. The assignment itself must be understandable to anyone who is marking it as certain expectations. We need 
to be met. You will find help in any guidance notes you've been given for your course. Reading these is just as important as interpreting the assignment title as they will explain the conventions that you are expected to abide by in shaping your piece of writing. For instance, if it asks for 1,500 words in continuous prose, it would not be a good idea to write 2,000 words and use subheadings. A useful way of converting your plan into a first draft of your assignment is to number each of the areas you want to include. You may have already linked them with arrows. This confirms the order in which you want to present ideas and ensures a logical flow. Then, cross off each area once you have written about it, so there is no danger of repeating yourself. This can be encouraging by showing you how much progress you are making. The three general principles of a report, whether it is of a social sciences investigation or a scientific experiment, are why was it done? How was it done? What does it mean? You will need to make some decisions, not only about what to leave out, because it isn't particularly relevant, but also about how to present what you are including to best effect. Do you wish to present your findings in chronological order? Would subject area types or categories be preferable? What will make your findings clearer? Diagrams, tables, and graphs may help to present your results with greater clarity. Headings or subheadings, numbered paragraphs, and bullet points can also help to emphasize the main issues. The language used in a report is usually straightforward and to the point. The report's structure and organization make it easy to identify the various parts and to find specific items of information quite quickly. The main elements of an essay are the introduction, the main body, the conclusion, Now that you are beginning to draft, keep the assignment's title in front of you. Refer back to it regularly in ordering your material. Are you doing what you are asked to do or are you writing about what you want to write about? The introduction of a report. The introduction of a report has a very specific role and the range of approaches you may take is fairly limited. The function of such an introduction is to outline the aim of the investigation or experiment, list the objectives, provide background information in order to clarify why the investigation or experiment was undertaken. The introduction of an essay it can lead the reader into the main body of the assignment. Grab the reader's attention and interest. Explain how you are going to answer the question. Set the scene or provide a context. Give a brief answer to the question before the fuller explanations in the assignment itself. Set out the aims of the assignment. Indicate the position you will be taking in answering the question. Moreover, it may not do all of these things. The introduction you write for an assignment may be short and seek only to engage or draw the reader in. A fuller introduction which may be preferable if you are still 
Developing confidence in your writing could include any or all of the following points, an identification of the essay's topic and how you plan to define it. Here you are establishing what you intend to write about and making clear, perhaps by implication, what you don't intend to write about, thus indicating the scope of your essay. A brief definition of important terms or concepts for purposes of clarity. Highlights of the important debates that lie behind the question. An essay title often acts as a doorway to an area of controversy or debate, a signpost to the content and shape of your argument or response to the question. People vary in whether they prefer to write the introduction at an early stage or when they have almost completed their assignment. Here is a list of the pros and cons of beginning the first draft with the introduction. Students generally understand that they are required to present an argument in an assignment, but can feel unsure about what this means and how to go about it. Is this how you feel? Though an assignment is an exploration of a topic, it requires a sense of direction of building a case or argument in a logical manner. When drafting your next assignment, ask yourself is my argument logical and worth making? Is there a case? Have I made the argument as clearly as I can? Have I been sidetracked by issues that are irrelevant? Have I explained what lies behind my argument in sufficient detail? Not too much, not too little. Do my points follow on from each other and strengthen my argument? Have I provided evidence for what I say? Making your argument usually occurs in the main body of the assignment, whether it is an essay or a report. This is where you outline your point of view while demonstrating awareness of other perspectives or interpretations. To be convincing, you need to show your reasoning as to why you favor a particular perspective and to provide supporting evidence. You will recall from the planning activities how important it is to group your ideas together. Once you have reached the drafting stage, these groups of ideas should be subdivided into paragraphs. Paragraphs. Act as major organizers. Individually offer something distinctive in terms of analysis, argument, ideas or examples. May contain a new topic. Often start with a statement and then expand on or explain it. Include any related evidence, information or quotations. Throughout this unit, we have recommended that wherever possible, you try to put things into your own words. But you may not be familiar with this practice if you come from a different educational or cultural background. One of the purposes of writing assignments is to reach your own understanding of the issues and to show your tutor that you have done so. This is most effectively done by using your own words. However, there are occasions when it may be best to quote directly from your course material. For instance, as a piece of evidence or where you feel the author has expressed him or herself particularly memorably or effectively, including appropriate quotations, extracts or evidence is often a good way to add weight and authority to your arguments.
using quotations, is not the same as plagiarism. Plagiarism is borrowing too heavily from someone else's work and failing to acknowledge the debt, giving the impression that you are passing their work off as your own. Quotations should not be too long. A couple of lines is normally sufficient. Remember to acknowledge quotations by providing references. We are reluctant to be too specific here because practices do vary from academic discipline to discipline and from course to course. Once again, refer to any guidance notes you've been given. These may provide an indication of what style of presentation is preferred or required, whereas references serve as an acknowledgement of someone else's words. A bibliography allows the reader, in this case, your tutor, to identify in detail the source of your quotations and even ideas. Every assignment should contain a list of sources at the end, even if it is only your current course unit or TV program. There are many ways of presenting a bibliography. Having come so far with your drafting, how will you bring it to a close? The conclusion should summarize the content of the main body of your assignment, clearly and concisely. A final reference to the assignment title is often useful, emphasizing to your tutor that you have indeed answered the question. Your concluding paragraph should not include anything new, though it may suggest what needs to be considered in the future. It should emphasize the key elements of your argument. Once you have reached this stage, you have nearly finished. What does polishing mean, and what does it involve? Imagine polishing a car or a piece of furniture. Why might you do so? Usually, to make it look better, to present it in the best possible light, either for your own pleasure or to impress others, perhaps because you want to sell it. If it is an object that you value, it is worth making it look its very best, it deserves it. How effective your polishing is usually depends on the time and energy you devote to the task. Here is a list of indicators you can use to judge your polishing techniques. Most guidance notes given to students include these points, but they are not always followed. This is the point where you have to make the decision that the assignment is complete and ready to be sent off. It is not always an easy decision to make. Perhaps you feel that there is always room for further improvement or there is something more that you could have done. At a certain stage, the potential gain from further refinement is not sufficient to warrant delaying submission or to risk impeding progress with your course. Remember, you should be aiming for what is good enough bearing in mind all your other commitments and circumstances. This will help you to develop an action plan for future improvement, then put it to one side until next time. Finally, don't forget to keep a copy of your assignment, just in case it gets lost in the post. If 
you do harbor any residual anxiety. Is there anything you can do about it? Yes. You can make notes for your own use on what I did well in this assignment. What I would have liked to improve. You can ask your tutor if he or she is willing to look at the particular aspect of the assignment that has given you concern and provide feedback on that point. You can make a note to yourself for next time what I'd like to do better in the next assignment. This will help you to develop an action plan for future improvement. Then put it to one side until next time. Finally, don't forget to keep a copy of your assignment just in case it gets lost in the post.